Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hello. How are you? It is interesting. I got this hat, huh? I got a fez. A real fez from Morocco, uh, from my good friend, uh, friends uh, Kareem and Anas. They have sent this all the way from Morocco. I got a fez, and that goes so well with the... Uh, I, I feel very... And it's good timing, too, because where'd it go? Oh, what I hear is... <clears throat> I have a video request. And the video request is how to be an interesting person. Well, of course. Who else would you contact? <laughs> See, you guys at least know I'm joking. You know I'm faking it. You know it's all bullshit. Everybody, he actually thinks it's all. It's like, all right. Anyway, here's the the uh, video request from Young Josh. Josh Wright. Josh writes. Hey, Cappy. I wanted you to make a video request about becoming more interesting. Before I get to the questions, I'll briefly explain my situation so that you know the context and have some info included in the video if needed. I asked a girl to prom. She's incredibly smart, successful, and pretty on top of all that. She said no because someone else had asked her earlier. Examining life, I realized I'm not particularly charismatic and don't have much I can show off in a typical conversation. I play piano and compose, work out six to eight hours a week, uh, and stuff like that, but I'm still boring to talk to. I work at a grocery store, so I get about 20 hours per week in of social interaction. Here's a picture of myself. He sent a picture. Uh, how can I become more interesting as a man? How can I become a socialite? Is it my physical appearance? I understand that this still this is still high school, but I would imagine that these traits would carry on into later life, and I'd rather fix them now than suffer later. Josh. Well, thanks for the uh, the letter there, Josh, and the, the video request. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to address things that are specific to you, and then the general... Uh, advice that would apply universally and how to become an interesting man okay so specifically to you it, it, it speaks to your situation you're you're 17 no one's interesting at that age uh, you're supposed to be awkward and kind of clueless. you're not even a man yet legally technically and your brain isn't done developing until you're 25 uh, and so like anything else wine tobacco scotch um, you men will you'll get better with age you'll become more interesting with age but you just haven't lived enough now that doesn't mean you can't accelerate the process uh, by doing interesting things we'll go through the stuff that'll help accelerate that but don't beat yourself up so hard because uh, the girl didn't go to prom with you it's it's all right you you are you're 17 you're not supposed to be interesting it's like when um you get these idiot and at least your homies say, I want to become interesting, I don't think I'm interesting now. At least you know that. You get these idiot kids who graduate from college thinking they're smart and say, well, you know, I think, no one gives a shit what you think. You're a 22-year-old dipshit. You don't have any real-world experience. So, you, at least you acknowledge it. And that, that's good. So, we're going to go. So, but, you know, forgive yourself. You're, not, you're only 17. Um, also, high school is bullshit. Okay? Don't worry about what happens in high school. Uh, that's all going to change in one short year uh, when you graduate. And, and, well, okay, it's going to change, and you're going to go to high school version 2.0, which is college. And that's, there's still going to be bullshit going on there, but it's not going to be as artificial an environment. But the larger point, don't worry too much uh, about high school. Uh, just get your grades, get a school or trade school, whatever it is you want to do, and um, you got that. They, they always said, like, these are the best years of your life. That is the biggest fucking lie ever. They are the worst years of your life, uh, or they're, they're certainly not the best. Uh, that's down the road uh, when, uh, when you become interested. Uh, oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going, I took notes here because I want to make sure that we turn you, too, into an interesting man. Uh, I looked at your picture. You're not ugly, uh, and you're definitely in shape. The problem is that, it, like the rest of it, you, just, you got a baby face. You got kind of an undeveloped face, so it looks a little weird. I wouldn't say ugly, but when you'll grow into it. And it's just a problem. Like, you know, I, I had to, shit, I still do have a baby face. It's not unless I grow this do people actually think I'm an adult. Um, so that, that won't optimize till later, but you'll grow into it. So I'd say, you know, if you want to change it, see if you can't um, grow a beard or a mustache, see, you know, goatee, I don't know exactly 
lot of people can't connect, and you know, especially at 17, you get, don't do it if you got a little piece of shit patchy, don't do that, don't be that guy. Um, but you're just gonna, you just have to grow into it. And then keep working out, okay? So th these are all good things that you're doing, um, the working out, the playing the piano, composing music, that's, keep on doing that. But some of the physical stuff you just can't rush. Now, <clears throat> how to then become interesting? And this applies to men and women, but I've, I've tailored it more towards men because your goal would probably be to, to get women. Uh, but I'm going to read this verbatim because I want to sit down and really think this through. So here's, here's how I, it's just my opinion on how to be an interesting person, but here's how I think I've, I've boiled it down to its purest extract form. Become an interesting person, but your own interesting person, who is so entertaining and engaging that people want to talk to you and live vicariously through you. I'll read that again. Become an interesting person, but your own interesting person, who is so entertaining and engaging that people cannot help but want to talk to you and live vicariously through you. All right? Now, what does that entail? Well, I have five things. You know how I'm not terribly happy about having lists because it sounds too academic, but I, I'm trying to give you a bullet point, some targets, and some goals. And there's other stuff, but I've thought, so I've sat down, thought it through, and I think this is, this is, this will help. Uh, first, you have to become witty, clever, and have good humor. You have, you have got to be f not slapstick funny. You want more of a dry humor, okay? So you want to, you want to become Victor Borga funny, or Eddie Izzard funny, uh, Mitch Hedberg funny. You don't want to become Margaret Cho, Cho crass, bullshit funny. So uh, how do you develop wit, clever, and humor? Well, what I would recommend is you watch a lot of movies, you watch a lot of media, and you watch a lot of comedy. Right? So I got up here, Humphrey Bogart movies, Cary Grant, uh, Walter Matthau is incredibly charming. Uh, you want to watch some of his movies. And you just want to, you know, you want to pay attention to them. And I would even say, borrow some of their lines, if you have to. Because girls your age, they don't watch those old movies. They're too busy watching Pitch Perfect 2 or something like that. So you can, a great line, great line um, is, um, if, anyone's on, if anyone goes on the critical list, let me know. It's from the movie Charade. Great movie. It has both Cary Grant and Walter Matthau in it. And it's a great line. Like when you get shot down, or you know, ask a girl out, and she says, oh, no, I already got a boyfriend. They give you the, I already got a boyfriend. And you say, well, if anyone goes on the critical list, let me know. Great line. Great line. And you just look cool, man. You just look like you like you didn't even take a hit. You just keep on going. So uh, you want to watch those guys, The World's Most Interesting Man, even though he is a parody. Um, that's kind of an idea you want to become. You know, he's very charming. He, he, he's just the world's most interesting man. So these are going to give you icons, kind of goals to aim for. You're not going to become Cary Grant. You're not going to become Walter Matthau. You're not going to become the world's most interesting man. But it's better than looking at Howdy Doody or some other guy. You say, okay, that is kind of cool. That's kind of classy. So watch all those old moves. Again, I would also recommend um, comedy. Listen to comedians. Watch some Victor Borga. And, and don't listen. I mean, if, if you can, listen to them. But watch them too. So you can see them. Victor Borga, Mitch Hedberg, Eddie Izzard, Bill Burr to a lesser extent. Again, not Margaret Cho. Okay, you want to have you want, you want your comedians to have an IQ above 100. All right. Uh, the next thing of the five, you need to be charming. And once again, you will go and uh, watch the Cary Grant flicks. Watch Gregory Peck. He's a little bit more charming than than witty and funny. Uh, I hate to admit, George Clooney is also very charming. Watch him act because he always acts, or just he's just him. When you when you look at George Clooney, and you could say this about most of these actors, they're not actors; they were stars. Humphrey Bogart, Cary Grant, Gregory Peck, and George Clooney play the same freaking guy no matter what movie it is. It's just that it's like me. I'm, I'm not the same like as charming as George Clooney or anything like. But I'm consider. I'm, I'm, I don't have. I have no acting ability. Uh, Walter Matthau would be the only one, though, who can pull off different... Uh, he's a bad guy, he's a great bad guy, he's a great good guy, he's a great lovable guy. He's just... But he's also very charming in some of the... Uh, well, most of his movies. So you want to study their charm. Right? Um, also, with charm, you're going to want to come up with original compliments for women. All right? Or original lines. 
And I'm not saying, hey, babe, your legs must be tired because you've been running around my head all evening. But like one of my, one of my favorite ones I came up with, you can use it when you get old enough to drink. You'll go to a bar with a girl and they say, would you like something to drink? I'll say, yeah, I'll have something as intoxicating as her. And they, oh, yeah, charm. There are others, but, you know, and you can still rip them off from the old movies, you know, use that um, critical list line if you want. But you want to develop some very useful lines that will just tickle the fancies of women in points of conversation that are common and frequent. You know, I, how many times do I go to a bar? How many times are you going to go on a date? And how many times is someone going to ask, what would you like to drink in front of a girl you're trying to bed or you're trying to, to date? Well, that's a perfect line to use right there. Uh, not on the first date, but unless things are flirty and, and fun. Now, with these two general, well, these group of, of skills, your wit, your cleverness, and your humor, and your charm, you have to wait for the opportune moment to deliver or display those skills of yours. You don't try and force it. Wait for the opportune moment. Again, what would you like to have? Would you like something to drink? Yes, something as intoxicating as her. Don't try. It'll, it'll happen. You're in no rush. Okay? So you got to wait. You know, you're at, a con you're at a party. You're at a conversation. People are talking. Just sit and wait for someone to say something. If you have something that's really clever or witty or funny, you deliver it, and then you get a, you get a laugh. All right? And then you just shut up, you wait for nothing, you get a laugh. If you talk too much, or if you just talk a regular amount, they're going to see that you're, you're they're going to see your true intelligence. Whereas if you wait for opportune moments in time and only deliver it at that point in time, like real zingers, really good clever anecdotes or, or quips or witticisms, they're going to think you're like that 100%. They, they're going to think that's average for you when you are faking it. You're just waiting. So just... Just take your time, bide your time, wait, be patient, and then something, you know, and she came into the room and said, hey, is that a dog suit? And you said, huh, not if it was a German Shepherd. And then everyone's, oh, wow, hey, who's this guy over here? See, I don't know why you would say that, but again, wait for the opportune moment. Now, key to all this, though, uh, th these are traits that you want to get, and you can get it by watching and mimicking and studying. And, and, and practicing as well. But that's going to be more of an academic way. A way to do it uh, organically or naturally is to do interesting shit. The key to being an interesting person is to do interesting shit. Now, what is it? It's anything. All right, you play piano. You compose music. That's pretty interesting. Don't know a lot of people at your age that compose music. You know. Uh, but you know me, I do my mountain climbing, fossil hunting, motorcycling. The great Matt Baldoni plays uh, guitar. Just... Guitar, oh shoot, you can play guitar. You don't even need to be charming. You just say, hey, I got a guitar, girls. <laughs> you know. uh, may, matter of fact, completely forget everything I said about this video. Just go buy yourself a guitar and learn to play it. That's. <laughs> um, so, uh, whatever it is, though, it's what you want to do. Okay? It do don't do what you think is cool. Like, I didn't ride motorcycles because I thought it was cool. I rode motorcycles, to be truth, to save money on gas. Then I found out I really loved it. And I went, uh, there we go, and I went and, and went crazy with it. Um, so it, it is what you want to do because you, if you do what everyone else, it's like hipsters. If you do what everybody else thinks is cool, you're not, or, or they're being independent and unique, they're no longer independent and unique. You want to grab these fucking hipsters and they're all the fucking same. They're the definition of conformity. So you don't want to do what you think other people want you to do. You want to do what you do. Like the accurate guy. We sell cars. We do cars. You do you. Or something like that. So whatever it is uh, you want to do. There's one final thing though with these activities or uh, the, the, the hobbies or, or the things that you will pursue. Um, they have At least one of them has to be challenging. If you do stuff that is easy, a lot of other people have done that. Okay? If you do stuff that's hard, not a lot of people have done that, and that makes you rare, that makes you interesting. For example, not to sound arrogant, I usually can keep an audience at a party uh, occupied and engaged by talking about my motorcycle ride to Alaska and back. Not a lot of people have done that. And they'll say, where'd you go? How long did it take? Da -da 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 -da. And as you do these challenging things, you will 
not only become an interesting person, you'll, you'll start to notice interesting things. Like I noticed the further up you got, you have 16 hours of daylight to drive and that really cuts down on the number of hotels you have if you're willing to sit and ride that long. Um, so in doing this stuff, I don't want to say rare or unique, but challenging, which will make it rare and unique, that will make you a more interesting person. Um, what else? I got that. Right, okay, so you have, so then that's how over time, as you age, you will refine like a good wine, or you will refine like a, um, like a good scotch, and you'll just be interesting. You'll just, you'll have interesting things to say at parties. You'll say, oh yeah, this one time I, I composed this uh, thing, and they played it over at this high school. We got the ensemble here. Really? And then, then they'll ask you questions, and you just, then, then you tell them the story, but, um, what was I gonna say? But you don't. When you're telling the when you're telling interesting things, you don't have to be clever or witty. Just tell them it's interesting. If you fit cleverness in there, you can. Uh, this is very important. Unless you have the floor and you are telling people about interesting things you have done, you shut up and really listen to what people say, and you respond precisely to what they say. Right? For example, most conversation is two people talking about a subject that they have something in common with that subject. And this guy will say, oh yeah, I, um, I bought a, um, I don't know, I bought a kite and I went flying one time and I said, oh, well I have a kite, it's a, it's a Chinese kite. Oh really? Well I looked at those kites but I was thinking about getting this other kite. This isn't to say that the conversation is not interesting. But if you look at it, it, it people are very self-centered, they're very self-focused. They're going to talk about what they, they're just waiting. Conversation is really just other people waiting for you to finish up so they can talk about what they think. Go one step further. Not only listen, but respond precisely to what they say. It's, it's a subtle difference, but it's a key difference because if you can say, ask them precisely about what they're saying, and you may be bored about that's all right. Um, you know, just, just ask them about it. Find out what they're thinking and get them to talk more. And they're going to think you're a great conversationalist when all you're doing is you're more like, I don't want to say interrogating because that sounds like you're a cop, but you're kind of interrogating them. You're listening very closely to what they're saying and then you're following up with questions that have them dig and delve deeper so that you're having them talk about themselves and they feel good. That triggers the endorphins. And then you are, quote, an interesting person. All right. And then finally, do not try to be interesting. Be interesting. All right. Uh, if you force it, it's going to seem fake, it's going to seem artificial, and you'll probably do overkill. Right? Again, you, you will want to try, I, I, I shouldn't say you shouldn't try at all, but you should try to be a little bit wit and charming. You should pay attention and, and uh, try to deliver key snippets and witticisms when it's, when it's uh, opportune moments you know, during conversation. But don't be trying to force it in there. Don't be trying to always try to be... One, go do interesting things. So that is what's going to make you interesting, all right? And then two, be witty, charming, clever, intelligent, and funny. But then do not, three, do not flood it. Wait, be patient. Remember, you want them thinking you're this interesting or this intelligent. Not where you really are. I'm not saying you're an idiot. I'm just saying everyone is here. Everyone has, a, has their intelligence. But if you only speak during opportune moments in time, you're going to seem very much more, you're going to seem a lot more intelligent. You're going to seem a lot more interesting. You're going to seem a lot more funny. And they're going to assume you're up here. And then, um, but, but those are, but it's, it's, you meet it out, M-E-T-E. -E. You don't flood the market. You hold your words in short supply, very low supply, so that when you say something, those words carry weight and people pay attention and listen to you. I'm saying don't talk when someone asks you about, you know, oh, how, was your, how was your composing of the thing? Then you tell them. But aside from that, less is more. Kind of silence is golden, but less is more. Do not flood the market. Anyway, that's it. So the, the best thing you can do, I mean, I know there's a lot of philosophical bullshit and all that, just go do interesting things. A lot of it will take care of itself. But if you wanted to accelerate it, I cannot put as much. I cannot emphasize enough developing your wit, your humor, your charm, your cleverness, and then 
piecemealing it out, not flooding it, not trying. And if you do that, I can't guarantee you'll be more interest, more interesting or an interesting person, but boy, you'll, you'll come real close and you'll definitely be more interesting than the average 17 year old kid. So practice that stuff. Don't worry about your working. I keep working out. That's all great. You know, come up with a list of interesting things you want to do and don't worry too much about high school. And, all. and yeah, I'm sorry. You got that baby face and that's, that's just going to have to happen over time. Anyway, best of luck to you. Toodles.